Listen, NVMe technology is changing rapidly and what you need to know about what the benchmarks are, because the benchmarks are going to lie to you and mislead you and be deceiving, is kind of important. And also, level one is building a new storage server test rig. And I just wanted to share. All right, so first up, if you didn't check it out, you should definitely check it out. I did a video on Threadripper Pro and toward getting 15 million IOPS out of the platform. Almost on cue, <laughs> Intel released a blog post talking about their new completely standard Intel Xeon 2U platform, which got 80 million IOPS. Yes, 80 million IOPS, and it's legit. But how did they do that? Well, it turns out that uh, they needed to re-engineer the entire NVMe stack. And it's exciting for me because this sort of parallels my own journey over the last year or so. And it all started when I was helping Linus with his storage array. You see, he had 24 NVMe devices that he wanted to set up. And when you've got a storage array that large and each device is pushing upwards of four gigabytes per second in terms of streaming performance, well, 24 times four gigabytes per second, that's putting a lot of pressure on main memory. As in, the bandwidth from main memory to the CPU is on the order of the bandwidth from all of those disks at once to main memory. Like, the disks in aggregate might be faster than memory, or at least really close to it. So how do you get stuff done? Well, that's what Intel ran into when they were working on their 80 million IOPS project. And uh, it's really, it's, it's pretty exciting. But first, let's take a look at our test platform, because it's based on Rocket Lake. So thanks ASRock for providing the Velocita Z590. I've got some more information on that coming up, maybe a, maybe a full review. It's a decent-ish Z590 motherboard. If you got more money, definitely spend more, get more on a higher-end Z590 motherboard. For the i5, I think it's fine. It comes with an extra VRM fan, which you'll definitely need if you're pushing a higher clock CPU, but all in all, it's not a bad board. And it's a great board for testing PCI Express 4 connectivity, whether it's with that Honey Badger, or with the P5800X. And that sort of brings me to my, my next thing. What's happening right now with storage is not the first time this has happened. If you look really closely at what Intel was talking about in their new software stack, in order to be able to achieve 80 million IOPS, they had to rewrite the Linux kernel support for NVMe. They developed their own thing called SPDK. And this is pretty exciting. This is kind of like what I ran into with, with Linus' server because if you're working in interrupt mode, the interrupt performance really just isn't there. Interrupt mode has some overhead of its own and if you generate an absurdly huge number of interrupts, that's more overhead than simply just polling the device to see when it completes. Or even just polling it in kind of a smart way. It's like, hey, this thing usually completes in about six microseconds. Let's give it about six microseconds and then poll it to see if it's complete. That, you know, if you're dealing with juggling 20, 30 devices at once and the storm of interrupts that generates, it can actually be less overhead to deal with it that way than to deal with it, you know, any other way, which is what is the standard now in the Linux kernel. Now there's a hybrid approach where it uses both interrupts and polling to find a sweet spot in terms of efficiency. But Intel, <laughs> that wasn't even efficient enough for Intel because you've still got spin locks to contend with, which is an internal Linux kernel thing, and I don't want to really super get into the particulars of it here, but Intel sort of mentions that when they're talking about their driver. The SPDK is a uh, lockless, no contention, zero copy implementation. Those three words are like fireworks to, to performance engineers because those are the magic words that make everything go away. And when I say that history is kind of repeating itself here, I'm not talking about storage, I'm talking about with networking. So the first place, one of the first places that zero copy showed up was with network implementations. In the beginning, you know, 15 years ago, and until storage has gotten as fast as Optane, like Optane's pushing the envelope in terms of storage speeds, zero copy meant that something is happening with the network card. The network card gets a big payload from the network and puts it in main memory. And instead of the system doing a lot of copies of that data, the system just does manipulation of the program that's analyzing the data to actually have it analyze the data wherever it put it in memory. So imagine somebody bringing you a big box of data 
and instead of having to like unpack the data and make a copy of the data and move it around the room, you literally just do it in place where it landed. And the reason that that was so important so many years ago and continuing on to the present day is because networking, memory, and CPU speed were all kind of keeping up with one another. Look at mechanical hard drives. Mechanical hard drives today are not really any faster than they were 10 or 15 years ago. We've sort of hit the state of the art of mechanical hard drives. The only way to make it faster is to add more read-write heads, which also makes the mechanism a little bit more fragile and comes with engineering challenges. It's kind of the same with flash memory. We can make flash memory faster by adding more layers and more interfaces and more controllers. That helps with parallelism, but it doesn't help with latency. If I just need one piece of information, I just need one sheet of paper from that filing cabinet, it takes a finite amount of time to get to the filing cabinet, to open the drawer, to find the paper, to remove it, and hand it off. With Optane, it's a completely different technology than the filing cabinet. It's basically a microfiche machine with electronic lookup, which, you know, I'm, I'm doing a terrible job. It's, you know, it's a famous scientist once said, it's like when you, when you use a, an analogy to explain a, another analogy that depends on the first analogy, you've done a terrible job. Well, I just did a terrible job. So to be sure, Optane is faster than even NAND flash with the latency aspect of it. But if you look at, you know, older drives like the Optane DC P4800X and you look at benchmarks, it would say, well, these aren't really that impressive because their stream performance is only about two gigabytes per second or two and a half gigabytes per second. Um, the amount of paper they can move at any one time is not super impressive, but the speed with which they can retrieve that paper is about half what is normally required of uh, NAND flash or twice main memory. Well, the P1500X changes things a little bit in that the stream performance of the P1500X will absolutely saturate the PCI Express 4 interface. Those drives are PCI Express 4. We did a full review on them, you know, seven, eight gigabytes per second. So stream performance is there, but also IOPS is there. Intel rates them for one and a half to two and a half million IOPS. If you're doing absurdly small computation and you just need to re retrieve a, you know, 512 bytes at a time and you create the absolute most optimal unrealistic scenario possible, you're pushing 5 million IOPS per drive because they got 5 million IOPS out of each drive because they had 16 of them that hit 80 million IOPS. So something like that has to be going on, right? Because otherwise the math doesn't work. So having a zero copy implementation for storage means that when the storage device deposits a block of data into main memory, the operating system doesn't really do mu too much with it. Um, for locking and a lockless mechanism in the kernel, like what we ran into with Linus's storage server, all of that goes away. Like you don't, you don't just have polling, you also do away with lock contention, which can be a big part of it when you're dealing with IO devices. Because normally with IO devices, you do actually want some kind of a lock. It sort of dates from the days before IO devices were so insanely fast but there are better hardware mechanisms for dealing with that. And that's what Intel's done with their SPDK driver. It's, it's a lockless implementation, so all of the overhead of dealing with the lock is gone. And it's also polling, so all of the overhead of dealing with interrupts are gone. Now to be sure, interrupts are actually a good thing. They're not universally bad. It's just that they're not, they're doing more harm than good when the number of interrupts that you have per unit time is so insane that the system can't deal with it. So it's so, it would be like having interrupts on memory operations being complete. It's like, I'm going to copy this block of memory from here to here. Let's set up an interrupt for when that completes. Nobody, like nobody even thinks twice, like it, it, nobody thinks about it that way. These are basically becoming memory devices. And so uh, nobody thinks about it and it's kind of going away. And it's kind of going away to the extent that we may actually have local and pooled memory. Like hyperscalers may actually just have a bank of five or six terabytes of memory, like actual memory. And they'll like compose that extra memory into their virtual machines for jobs that need it and then eject the memory when they're, when they're done with the job. And so a pool of 50 or 100 servers in Iraq could actually share a centralized pool of memory. So the fact that we've been bumping up against these limits for years now and not really having a practical way to apply the solutions from the scientists until fairly recently um, has been kind of a big deal because the storage subsystem just wasn't architected to deal with that. So the fact that Intel is open sourcing SPDK and the fact that you can go look at the documentation and stuff like that seems like a big deal. I'm really excited to embark on trying to use SPDK with a relatively standard 
Linux setup with my relatively pedestrian enterprise cast off, you know, first generation data center Optane devices, my one P5800X, maybe two if I can borrow another one from Intel. Call me. Yeah, I mean, you know, let's, let's do some testing because I do have a pair of 8380s and quite a lot of RAM and I'm building a system right now as we speak. The big question on my mind is, what sort of performance do you get before you do the SPDK optimization? I know that on a single core Threadripper system, the limit is around 15 million. Maybe if you do a lot of tuning and stuff like that, you can get a little bit more. And I think on a two socket system, you can easily push past 20 million IOPS. Another thing here, if you look at the numbers from Intel, something on the order of 25, 26 microseconds in order to service these requests when the device is under a 10 million IO operations per second load, that's pretty incredible. I mean, if you compare that to the Samsung array that we had in our P5800X review, that's four Samsung 983s. Now, admittedly, those are older generation Samsung uh, NVMe, but those are the flagship. Those are the enterprise uh, SSDs from Samsung. We're talking about mm, a thousand microseconds for that array to uh, deal with the IO. But let me be clear, this is not an apples to apples comparison because the driver stack here is Windows versus SPDK. And I'll tell you right now, SPDK is is like alien technology. It's so far ahead of what Windows is doing because Microsoft is not doing much here. Even with a relatively high-end four drive 983 array here, the only thing that will really match a single P5800X is that streaming speed. And it's about 11 gigabytes per second versus about eight. And eight is the, you know, <laughs> top end of what you can expect from PCI Express 4. And this is using eight PCI Express 4 lanes through the PLX bridge that these are connected through. So, I mean, the Samsung 983 performance here is not bad. It's pretty good as far as NAND flash goes. And the performance is also consistent as you fill the drive up. But again, performance as you fill the drive up is not a thing for Optane. It's perfectly consistent as full or as empty as it, as, as, as it gets. So, yeah, exciting times. So I think that uh, the work that Intel's doing could benefit everybody. It could even benefit ARM servers because this is a problem that will exist in the ARM space for these types of storage devices that are attached to eventual ARM servers. So it is kind of a platform agnostic thing. But it's also really cool to see Intel turn its software engineering prowess to be able to pull this off because you know, this is a, a project that's been several years in the making, sure, but that is the blink of an eye in terms of software engineering timescales, especially when we're talking about a subsystem that touches so many different parts of all of computer architecture. And the fact that we're moving into zero copy, which we've had on the network side of things for a very long time, for actual storage, just underscores, you know, how much convergence we're getting between storage and main memory. You know, the lowest hanging fruit right now in computer engineering seems to be making storage faster to make faster programs to do blah, 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 because we can't grow memory density fast enough or our problem space is outpacing what we're able to deal with in main memory. Because historically, the way to deal with it was to just add more memory so that everything was happening on the CPU and memory and on the network. So it is a really exciting time in terms of storage and it's really exciting for those things to trickle down. I mean, look at the new Fison E18 microcontroller as well. They get it. All of the storage vendors get it. And they're focusing not just on that stream performance, but also on minimum IO latency, using things like onboard RAM on M.2 to try to lower that, and trying to do things like optimize how single level cells are used so that you get really ridiculous IOPS. I mean, that Mushkin drive that we tested is 1.7 million IOPS until you start to actually fill the capacity because it's very cleverly using the capacity that it has. Um, in the fastest way possible for the analog to digital converters to figure out is that a is that a, a one or a zero is the next one a one or a zero is the next one a one or a zero and that's the thing that's the, the bottleneck kind of right now uh, in the controller and trying to figure out what was stored in that flash cell which is kind of insane to think about but you know exciting times well i'm wendell this has been enough of a level one ramble about nvme storage where we're going and and how intel was able to do 80 million iops i'm gonna try to reproduce it the best that i can with the tools that i have i don't have that much optane but i can at least see if we can get something on the order of 10 million iops with a single thread on the 8380 early testing does look promising but it takes a basically completely new software stack to be able to do that so uh, but then the, the software stack also benefits other people, so uh, 
Could be good. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums. Oh, and if you have any ideas to contribute to our uh, benchmarking platform, I'm building uh, a set of tests and a suite of tests, basically, for modern NVMe testing that goes beyond just the the numbers, or at least maybe does a better job to try to explain what the numbers are. Because the stream performance, you know, how many gigabytes per second do you get, is not the only important thing. It's also latency, it's also how it handles things under load. Does the controller optimized, you know, reading while riding? If you're copying, you know, uh, something off of your, your camera storage at, you know, USB 5 or 10 gigabit speeds, uh, does that bog the system down while you're trying to do other things? It shouldn't, but there are some SSDs out there that actually do bog down. So if you'd like to see some, you know, particular tests done or something that I can encapsulate, let me know. And drivers matter a lot, so it's gonna be a gonna be a sticky problem. And I gotta consider it carefully. So it'll, it'll take me a little bit of time. I'm Wendell this is level one, I'm signing out, you can find me in the level one forums.